37. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Genesis, chapter 37, right after chapter 36, before 38, amen, Genesis 37, starting in verse 1, amen. When you find it, say amen. Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Thank God for the Word of God, amen. Last week, we dealt with... Uh, Moses and the children of Israel. No, last week we dealt with fasting. That's right. You got to fast to last. You got to pray to stay. You got to give to live. You got to read to lead. You got to walk to walk. You got to talk to talk. You got to fly real high. And if you can't hack it, then grab your old jacket. Now, what's funny about that is y'all have heard me say that for so many years because this is the month in which we start fasting. We believe in God for vision and healing and all the things that go in our life. Fasting is not a bad thing for you. Actually, it's a good thing. You get sick, your body will fast. It will shut down on you, amen, to bring health into your body. It's our, our intake that changes us. My pastor was sharing with me on the way here, the only difference in the bees, in the bee world, Amen, is the jelly, the royal jelly that they eat. The queen bee gets royal jelly all the time. The worker bees get a little bit of uh, royal jelly for just a few days while they're in the larva stage. That's the only difference in them. And because she gets the royal jelly the rest of her life, nutrition changes everything. Amen. She lived longer, got bigger, amen, and began to produce more. So it's your nutrition is so important. I know spiritually speaking, it's important for us to take in nutritional um, biblical truths. But on the flip side, what you eat, especially right now, amen, you got to keep yourself as healthy as possible. Can I get an amen? So it's a good time to back off on the, on the nicotine and the, and the uh, caffeine and, and the co 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 cocaine and all that other stuff, man. Just, just kind of back away from it for a little while and, and uh, decide, okay, maybe I'm going to eat one meal a day or I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat, you know, fried food. We can do it without fried food a little while. Amen. Just kind of set it aside and uh, whatever it is you decide, the biggest thing is, is your language. Watch malicious talk. Isaiah 58 said, the reason God don't hear us is our malicious talk. You fast and you think you want to be heard, and yet you got a gossiping, backbiting, criticizing, criticizing, malicious talk. Amen. God said, I ain't listening to that. Amen. So it's very important. Watch your tongue. Uh, and I reminded myself of that already this week. Yes, pastor got to watch his tongue. Amen. Alabama lost Monday. I mean, I had to watch my tongue. Glory to God. Amen. It happens. Amen. You got to play in the national championship to win one. Amen. So at least we got there again. We've been talking about detours, roadblocks, potholes. And two weeks ago, we talked about Moses and how when he traveled, amen, and when he took them out of the Red Sea, toward the Red Sea, they actually went down from Goshen, Egypt, down south, went across the Red Sea, and it took them 40 years to go all the way back up here. And what you realize was that God was maturing them because of detours. Detours are very important. Everybody in here has one, has had probably several, but there are things we want to share about it this morning. So let's start in Genesis chapter 37. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers the sons of Belhi and the sons of Zeppah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his son, other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him, uh, what we'd call a coat of many colors. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Let me just stop just for a minute and tell you that sibling issues, rivalries will always be. I mean, if you've got kids that love each other all the way through life, then you have one child. This thing does not stop. It just, it just uh, you know, in my, I have five kids, as you know. I have two daughters that I raised. And what, I'm not a stepdad. I'm a dad that stepped up. Amen. And I have three uh, children that I adopted. And uh, there are times it's like absolute harmony in heaven. And the other 23 and a half hours of the day, it can just be, uh, what in the world? Were y'all not raised in the same house? Amen. So here we find this man, Joseph, not loved uh, by his brothers because he's overly loved by his father. 
Amen. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. You know, if they already hate you, why are you pouring it on? Amen. So he had a dream, and he began to share it. Somebody texted me this week, said, Pastor, I got a dream. I want to, and I said, hold on to it. I don't want to hear it. Amen. Keep your dream to yourself for now, and watch and see what God does with that. Be careful how you share that. So Joseph had a dream, told his brothers to hate him all the more, and he said to them, hey, guys, listen. Hey, I want you to hear me. This was my dream. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, and suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually, remember, he's the little brother. Will you actually rule us? And they hated him, again, all the more because of his dream that he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. This time, the sun and the moon and 11 stars, 11 brothers bowed down, but there was a sun and a moon. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him. That means he chewed him out. What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. I love the fact that we as parents at times, we'll hear our kids say something, and we just keep the matter to ourselves. Amen. It was very important. Mary did that when she heard about Jesus when he was born. She t pondered it. She took it within herself. Let me mention to you a few things before you sit down. Amen. This is our goal here, the goal of, of detours. The first goal is to provide understanding that God frequently takes us on detours from the path toward our own destiny for the purpose of maturing and equipping us. The whole issue of taking the children of Israel after 400 years of being ingrained in the Egyptian culture was to change their culture, amen, and set them on the right path. He did the same thing for Joseph. As a matter of fact, I can walk you through figure after figure, particularly in the Old Testament that he did it with, and Paul and Peter in the New. Let's go. The second goal is to encourage those who struggle with difficult circumstances by helping them identify the Lord's hand in the midst of the storm. In other words, the things that you are fixing to go through, have gone through, or will go through are detours, and God is doing it to help you understand storms happen all the time. Somebody asked me this week, as a matter of fact, people were amazed that over two, week, two years now of pan, pandemonium, pandemic, I have not had the virus. I've had co uh, a cold once, but I've not had the virus. Or not be and, and here's the thing. When somebody told me that, they said, I can't believe you've shaken so many hands and hugged so many people and done what you've done, and you ain't got sick yet. And, can I, and I told him it ranks on the just and the unjust. It doesn't make me more favorable than anyone else. Amen. In my life, there have been a lot better people that have gotten the virus than me. Amen. And I do not feel left out. And if I can get through all this without it, I'm good with it. Can I get an amen? Amen. But the bottom line is, is you don't know how life is going to be. You just got to keep on living. And so I've not been, as you know, incarcerated or, or uh, what is it, evacuated. Uh, Quarantine, that's the word. I've not done any of that. I, I just live life, and I just believe that that's what you got to do, and, and you take it as it comes. And my heart breaks for those who have had it, and it has been a tragic thing for, their, for many of us who've seen the funerals that we've done. But the flip side of that is, uh, guys, it's still a strong flu, and it happens every year. I go back. I have someone watch me right now from New Mexico because she'll text me right after church. I did her dear husband's funeral, who was 54 years old, of died of pneumonia. Happened years ago. This thing happens. Life happens. But you got to realize to live as Christ, die is gain. Amen. Sometimes I say, God, whenever you, it's up to you. you when you're ready, I'm out of here. Amen. Good with all that. Father, we already prayed over the word. Get your head up. Sit down. Detours. Detours. Let me talk a little bit more. Detours, if you, if you just want a good definition, are distractions from the original intended route that we had planned to take. The reason pastor's preaching on detours here in the Pardon me for going to the third person here, but I was heading back from Alabama down to Mississippi to pick up a set of car keys and a passport because my daughter, uh, she borrowed the vehicle, her and my son, to go watch a movie while they were in Alabama. She got her, her billfold stolen, the keys stolen, and, and I had to have them back. So Katie, my other daughter, brought the keys to Monroe. I went down, got detour after detour after detour, and when it happened, I was so mad. You know, because I have to live from detours going from New Caney to here. And for the last three, four years, there have been detours. We have been shifting and moving, and, and it's still that way now. And it, it takes you off your intended target, where you're heading to. And, and I, was, I remember I screamed inside my sister-in-law's car, which, by the way, was a Chevrolet, which didn't make me happy at all. And I screamed inside that car, and it was like the, the Spirit of the Lord just calmed me down and said, enjoy the trip. And I had to back off and realize, hey, it's not so bad. 
Amen. I'm just going to enjoy the journey. I'm, I'm going to just be blessed by what I see. And sure enough, it was an amazing thing for me. When we get in our cars, we usually have this destination in mind. Typically, we know how we plan to get there. Most of us now are smart enough to use some type of uh, a social map, amen, on our phones, amen, to move to it. And, and it includes roads and highways that we intended to take along the way. But on many occasions, we run into detours. Joseph and I were on our scooters on Friday, and we hit detour after detour, try, just trying to get home. And, of course, when you're on a motorcycle, you don't have to do what cars do. Right, Joseph? I'll just leave that right there. You might get a detour, but it won't take you as long, Kenny, to get around it. Amen. We pre-plan our route, and we've determined to get to where we're going to go. But detours are typically unexpected and inconvenient. Amen. You know, perhaps as a police officer or somebody out there flagging, amen, a vehicle's broken down somewhere. They, they take us off our intended route, and as much as it takes us longer than we had planned to get to our final destination, amen, it's so much smarter to leave a little early. Can I get amen? Amen. A straight line is simple. An un, un, uninterrupted journey is preferable. Amen. But that stopping and starting and that detouring around and, and messing up and following a car that don't know where it's going can drive you nuts. Amen. As a believer, you just need to know where you're heading in Christ. Amen. We have a destiny from an eternal perspective. We know that our destiny is to be in God's presence forever. This is it. I know, and you know, that when you die, you're going to be in God's presence forever. That, that's not the problem here. Worship Him. Amen. Working for Him in our eternal state, whatever God has planned for us. But our focus here is on our present destiny. And this is where we don't know where we're going. I know where I'm going when I get there. That's going to be up to God. But here where I'm at today, I have not always known where I'm going. So the reason you weren't taken to heaven the moment after you became a believer, and I've asked this question of God before, amen, it's because of the purpose on earth he desires to use you to fulfill. I've often thought, God, why don't you just save us and take us? Wouldn't that be amazing? Now, there wouldn't be a need for pastors or church. I mean, as soon as you got born, somebody would have to be here. Amen. But, but as soon as you got born, again, you were taken out of here. It doesn't work that way. It seemed like, and I thought when I got born again when, in 1979, I would only be here, literally, I literally believe, just a couple of years. I was so conceited that I thought the only reason God saved me was to help prepare the rest of the world because I was it. Have you ever thought you were that favorable toward God? Amen. I was wearing Jesus shirts, and, and I was witnessing the cops that stopped me. Hallelujah. I, I was being as, as good as I could to everybody around me, and then life just kept on going. And now I'm fixing to celebrate 28, 29 years of pastoring churches. Hallelujah. And here I'm, I'm fixing to be 40-something years of serving Jesus, and he ain't showed back up yet, and I ain't left. I've been on detours ever since. Can I get an amen? So God uses detours as part of his design for our lives. It's not just getting a job, collect a paycheck, pay bills, have fun on the weekends. There's a God-designed stamp for everybody in here. God has a purpose for everybody in here. And oftentimes, we'll start trying to do our own thing. Next thing you know, there's a detour because God wants to send you somewhere else. Now, I can't prove this. You can't disprove it. But I, I have, I've lived in this area now since uh, 1986. And because of that, I, I, I've been on several detours. And here I, we found myself out at the ranch, and I found myself back here in this place. And just me personally, I feel like God has taken me on a lot of detours. Amen. And now some people say, well, Pastor, that's because you don't, perhaps you screwed up or made mistakes or, or this, that, and the other. Maybe I did. But I found this out, and I've learned it and believed it with all my heart. If it ain't God sent, it's God used. Amen. If God didn't send those things into my life, he sure used them in my life. Amen. He backs all the way back into the 80s when I went to that camp out there. And I, I, I wrestled with them Wood Forest folk, hallelujah, and dealt with them. I, I just have these uh, great history in my life. Somebody said, Pastor, you need to write a book. Uh, well, I, no, I, I don't write well. But my life has been one of a book, and so is yours. And I'd love to hear your story sometime. I've listened to many of you. So the reason God don't take us is we got to fulfill something. Moses, and this is what I want to catch very quickly, and I want you to look at this. Detours take more time. Say it with me. Detours take more time. Say it again. Detours take more time. Because here's the thing. You'll hear a sermon or a message on Sunday. You're so excited. By Wednesday, you're thinking to yourself, this detour should be over. This thing should be over. And when you walk through Scripture, you realize it wasn't weeks, it wasn't months, but it was years before some of these men of God's detours ever stopped. 
They were constantly on the move. Things happened, and we get so depressed so quick, amen, because things didn't work out over on, on Monday. God, I gave, I gave an offering on Sunday. Here it is Monday, and nothing happened. You sowed a seed. You've ever planted a seed? Amen. It takes time for it to grow and to come up. You got to fertilize it. You got to water it. You got to stay with it. You got to remind yourself that's your garden. Amen. But many times we get discouraged along the way. So here we read in Numbers chapter 32 about Moses, the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until the whole generation of those who had done evil in his sight was gone. Amen. So Moses had 40 years of detouring. Abraham is on a detour for 25 years while he waits for God to give him an heir. Let me tell you, he, he had to wait for Sarah to get pregnant. He, 25 years. I, I know as a man, you can get depressed. Uh, I, my first nine years of marriage, no, there were no children. I got, and of course, the Lord blessed me with three adopted kids. But pastor, <laughs> and I can't prove this, you can't disprove it, but I was arrested three times for protesting against abortion. And God gave me three kids. Perhaps I sold into something that God blessed me back with. The only thing I can give God praise for is I wasn't arrested four times. Hallelujah. Amen. But that, that happens. Here's Abraham. The Bible says in Genesis 12, I, I don't mean that. By the way, can I tell you that during that time of my life, there were people that came to me about children, and I was able to set children in other people's lives. Many of you know Kirby and Connie, amen, and uh, Tiffany and Dwayne and others. I was able to help, to get, and there was another child in uh, Alabama that we, we did that. It, God bless. There was a great season in my life, amen, to see that happen. Uh, Genesis 12, 1 through 4, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land I'll show you. I will make you into a great nation. I'll bless you. I'll make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I'll curse, and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Remember, we've been grafted in to this branch of Abraham. So as Gentiles, we there. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot, of course, there's his nephew hanging out, went with him. Abram was 75 years old, and he set out from Haram. Amen. He got word that God going to bless him. Amen. He's going to have uh, stars in the sky. His children will be like sands of the seashore. Going to be an amazing thing. Thank you. I got a promise. Got a word from God. Years ago, I would get prophecies. People would prophesy over me. Hallelujah, there's prophecies and there's prophet lies. And the only difference in a prophet lie and a prophecy is time. You don't know, amen, and you'll get time. Time will go by, hallelujah. And some of those prophecies I've, I've got written down, I've got them on tape somewhere, and I listen to them, I go back, and I'll say, okay, God, are you going to do this, are you going to do that? I have prophesied over by John Osteen, Miles Monroe, Bishop Miller. I can go down a line of men who prophesied over my life, and I, I, I think about it, I say, God, and here's Moses, he gets a word from God, you're going to be blessed, man. You're going to be blessed. And he's waiting. His wife even laughed at him when he told her, baby, you're going to have, you're going to have a baby. Yee, doggy. Well, Abraham, you better get to work because it ain't happening. Amen. You know the story. Then he goes to Hagar, has a child outside. Amen. Started the Muslim nation. It's just a big mess all the way back. So here we go into, uh, where are we at here? There it is. Genesis 21.1. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, the Lord did for Sarah that he had promised. See, the promise wasn't just to Abraham, it was to Sarah. Sarah became pregnant, bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded him. Abraham was now 100 years old, 25 years and I, I meet people that get discouraged, backslide, leave God in the church within a month because something didn't happen from them. Detours take time. Amen. When God puts you on a detour and he gives you a promise, you got to stay with it. Stay with it. I said you got to stay with it. Don't back away from it. You got to press in. You got to quit belly aching just because you got a little hurt and stumped your toe, mashed your finger. Keep going, man. Don't stop. Don't quit. I know where we're going to go when we get to heaven. It's the right now that I struggle with. It's the detours of not just every week, but every year. Wonder what God's going to do next. The apostle Paul goes on a three-year detour. Amen. Waiting to, to, to do what God called him to do. Joseph spends 13 years on a detour during slavery and prison. Genesis 37, 2, this is the account of Jacob's family line. We read that Joseph was 17 years old, tending the flock when his brothers threw him in the pit. 17. Genesis 41. 
four chapters later, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and went, and Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced uh, plentiful. So now Joseph is, is taking 13 years to get from the pit to the palace. And on the way, there was the prison. So he got detour after detour. Joseph does not blame his brothers. Listen to me. He does not blame his brothers for what they did to him because he sees God's design in the detours. Amen. Genesis 50, verse 19. But Joseph said to them, talking to his brothers, you remember the dream? His brothers come to him. We may review a lot of this later. But his brothers come to him during a time of drought. Joseph had a dream. Seven years of blessing and seven years of drought. So he had them start saving up. This is important. When you feel God speak to you, and I know the year 2000, a lot of people thought God spoke to them about saving up and getting generators and packing up stuff because 2000 was the year that uh, uh, everything was going to collapse. And if you did get a generator and save up stuff, God bless you. That's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's 22 years old now. So he, here we are in a time of wondering, well, God, what, what are you going to do with our nation? Where are we at? First, I think you should always have at least six months' finances saved up. I think you should always have some food saved up. I think there ought to be deer meat in every freezer. Can I get an amen? Amen. And if you've got deer and, and you haven't brought your tithe to the house, bring it on in. All right. Uh, where else was I there? I always, I always get sidetracked when I start talking about deer, don't I? Amen. They, they mess me up. So, so here he has a seven years. and now it's, But the drought hit everywhere, so the brothers came and it didn't recognize Joseph. Of course not. 13 years later, I'm guessing if he's in Farrell's court, I've seen the movies, he's probably bald-headed. Amen, shaved his head. He's up there with shiny head. You know, all the Pharaohs had that. And he's over all the produce and things of that nature. Amen. And the Bible says that Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The point here, just like biblical figures, God takes us on detours to develop us for his purpose. But detours take more time, and also it helped other people. When I read this story, because I've looked back over it all this week, the whole thing, I just went through Genesis reading the story, and I'm thinking to myself, where did Joseph, how, how did he fall in love with the God of Israel? Amen. I, now, it had to be from his dad understanding his dad. He understood that he would have dreams. He understood godly things. Amen. But here's a man's life who was thrown into a pit. He was sold. Amen. He, end, he ended up uh, being a trumped up uh, rape charge on him. He has all these things going against him. And he looks at his brothers and said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, for the saving of many people. And at times I look at my life and I say to myself, now, can I do that? Can I look at life and not be upset, bitter, and mean about something that may have been happened to me or said to me and realize that God meant it for good, amen, that this thing was a good thing. So God uses detours to prepare us for our future. you got to be honest. We're simply not ready to handle our destiny. We're not. If, if God said, okay, you got born again, Jerry, at, at almost 19 years old, and here's your destiny, take off into it. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. It'd be like throwing car keys to an 8-year-old. They're not ready for it. My, my grandson's always wanting, I, I want to drive the golf cart. I want to drive the truck. I want to drive this. And I have to mature him into a place. He's now 11 years old. So he's getting into a place where he can soon, soon start driving in New Caney. But, but it's taken years to get him there. To, he's had to start off first in the golf cart and then, and then into the truck, sitting on my lap and moving forward. But you just don't throw the keys like that to somebody. And here's the thing is, everything God's done for you is prepare you for where you're at. Amen, it's very important. So you got to be honest about it. God reveals to Joseph details of his destiny, but he's not mature enough to handle them. He told them, and by the way, by you telling the brothers, they're not mature enough to handle it. They couldn't handle the dream. They couldn't handle the fact that i got to bow down to this little pretty coat squirt. I don't want to do that. Genesis 37, 5, Joseph had a dream when he told his brothers they hated him. 37, 10, when he told his father they got upset with him. Amen, so Joseph's journey into slavery allowed him to become acquainted with the Egyptian culture, the government, and the language. Very important. Culture, government, language. If you're going to serve in a place, get to know the culture, get to know the language, amen, and get to know the government. If you're in the little country church, you know we got a language here. We, the way we talk, the way we, 
express ourselves. Well, there's a culture here. Amen. We're not, we're not like all other churches, which is okay. Amen. Isn't it okay? I go to other churches. I go, we're not like this at all. I can preach there. I can do well there. But I'm thinking, well, this ain't us. Amen. This ain't us. I mean, it, you, it's funny how people can come here and love it, but y'all go there and you hate it. We just kind of fit here. Amen. It just feels right here. Amen. So even though God reveals Joseph's destiny, he also takes him on many detours in order to mature him. Key point, although each of our journeys look different, God takes us on detours to prepare us for the things he has in store for us in the future. Now, listen, last point. As we experience detours, sometimes things will get worse before they get better. Bumps, roadblocks, potholes, uh, what do things call them? Speed bumps, amen. You, you, things that you're not used to seeing. Almost running out of gas. Hallelujah. You ever been on a detour? There not be no gas stations there. You hit a guy. I remember being up in Utah preaching, driving through there in the gas. It said last gas for like 100 miles. But it was like a dollar a gallon higher. I said, I ain't doing it. It's not smart. Not smart at all. If it says last gas for 100 miles, take their word for it. Gas up. Amen. Joseph's brothers began to hate him all the more for telling them about the dream. Amen. Do you intend to reign over us because you got this dream? They, they resented him for trying to make himself look better than everyone else. That's how they thought. Amen. They don't understand him because of the dream. Joseph is stripped of his multicolored coat, an item of great personal value. Genesis 37, 23. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe of he was wearing. They, his brothers picked him up and they threw him into an empty pit with no water. They sold Joseph for eight ounces of silver. They were going to kill him. They were going to kill him. And one boy spoke up and said, no, we can make money on him. Do you know what his name was? His name was Judah. It was Judah that rose up and said, no, you can't kill that man. Well, let's sell him and make some money. You know why that's funny to me? I got a son named Judah. That's, his, that's exactly, I told him this week, I said, did you know it was Judah that saved Joseph's life? He meant it was Judah that said, hey, let's sell him. That's what my son likes doing, selling stuff. Amen. He just that way. He said, oh, Dad, you're prophesying now. Mm-hmm. Amen. So Joseph is falsely accused of raping his master's wife, Genesis 39. When she told him this story, she told Potiphar the story. She said, that Hebrew slave, you brought us, came to me, and he made sport of me. Made fun of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, ah, he left his coat right here beside me and ran out of the house. Did you know that coat was one of his favorite things and the only thing he still owned? Even no matter, it's not the coat of many colors. It's another coat. Amen. But he still liked that coat. He was a man like coats. He, coats always got him in trouble, didn't they? Amen. Had a pretty coat. They got envious of it, put him in a pit. Now he got another coat, left it behind. His name was printed in the label behind said Joseph. So Joseph's master took him, put him in prison, that the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, watch this. You won't talk about a blessing. While Joseph was still there in the prison, whew, God showed up. Hold on. You mean in my detours, God didn't leave me? He didn't go on ahead? No, he was with you in your detour. Amen. He put you on that detour to mature you. So he puts him in prison. And the next verse says, now he spent two years in prison. The Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. See, you can be in a bad place, and God can bless you with some good things. Amen. You can be, I mean, you can be in a hospital, and God will show up. You can be in a bad job, and God will show up. You can be in prison, and God will show up. You know, I mentioned to you about uh, I've been in jail. I had a 60-day sentence, and God showed up. Amen. I, I really, I, honest to God. When I left jail, I was depressed about it because I preached for 20, 21 out of 22 days. I preached in that cell pod with 20. I think I had 22 guys in there. Amen. My last meeting, 21 of them showed up to hear me preach the word of God. And it was uh, the, the, the uh, what you call them, uh, the guards were, were favorable toward me. Amen. And, kind. and not only that, I got three meals a day. I got medical. I didn't have medical as a youth pastor. I got medical while I was in there. I was trying to think of anything I could get fixed while I'm here. Amen. On y'all's tax money. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I was working that thing, son. I was just trying to do my best to get the best done. So here's Joseph. He, he's favored of the Lord. He, he granted him kindness. 
And even though most detours are difficult and seem as though life is getting worse, they are really part of God's design to prepare us for our future. As a young boy, we didn't have 200 channels. We had three. And in those three channels, every year, a certain show came on called The Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy, with her red slippers, was looking for a place, amen, where the lemon drops melt. Hallelujah. She was follow the yellow brick road. And if you're my age, that rings a bell in your mind when I say, follow the yellow brick road. Amen. And you realize she fought, but on her way there, there were detours. Amen. There were witches, monkeys, mean monkeys. Amen. There, there, was, there were all types of, of trouble on her way. The scary forest. She had three that followed behind her, one with no brain, one with no heart, and the other one, no courage. But they followed with her. And on their way together, one got courage, one got a heart, one got a brain. And she found out that the greatest place for her to show up after meeting the, this wizard of odds, who wasn't a wizard really at all, but a fake, as she clicked her heels together, made her wish, she went all the way back to Kansas, back home. Found out that this is what life was about, that journey and all the detours that come with it. One of the things that we know for certain is that God works through detours to bring about a blessing in order to deliver you to the place he has created. Some of you have no idea how you got to Crosby or Channel View or Dayton, amen, or Huff. You don't have no idea how you got to this place that you're in right now, amen. But if you look back over your life, you're going to see them. Detours, a detour, relational detours, financial detours, spiritual detours. I've seen God do things at youth camps and churches, and revivals that help people, amen, manage their detours so much better. Some will hit one, they get frustrated. They'll throw their hands up. They'll try to run through the sign. They'll, they'll speed up, have an accident. There are times that you've got to back off and say, you know what? If this ain't God sent today, it's going to be God used. Amen. Just like in Joseph's life, I'm going to move down this detour. God's plan for Joseph was to get him to Egypt so that he could fulfill his destiny. But in order to get him to the last chapter, he had to back him up to when he was 17 years old. Amen. He had to strip him of his tunic, separate him from his family, sell him into slavery, and put him into prison so that God could fulfill his destiny. Next week, we're going to stay on detours. There's still a cupbearer. There's still a baker. There's still his prison sentence. There's still what happened to Joseph as he's moving forward. There's the reunion of Joseph and his daddy. Amen. There's the understanding that the boys had carried a lie for 17 years about the death of Joseph. Amen. And now the dad. And you know what I found out after the dad found out? He wasn't mad at the boys. He was more glad having his son back than he was upset at the boys. Amazing story again. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Those watching online, amen, you can do the same. Detours have a purpose. It's not for you to curse or be mad about or upset. But God, if you're going to put me on a detour, I want you to show me, amen, what you have intended for me, what you have planned. And if it's just little by little, like your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, just show me that little. I just want to know I'm on the right place. If you've been away from God, would you put your hand up right now and let me pray for you? It's that simple. Just right where you're at. Thank you. God love you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Just put your hand up. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's all good. Let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, I've detoured. I'm with you now. If it's not God sent, it's God used. Forgive me my sins. Take my life. Use it. Help me as I head toward my destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, God, praise in here. I have had different